throughout my career at the European Space Agency, I passed many significant events in ESA's history. Milestones, first attempts, landmarks. Looking back, they may appear like isolated events, similar to a collection of single dots on a piece of paper. I want to share the knowledge that I gained along with my journey while connecting these dots. My name is Paolo Ferri. Welcome to my masterclass. When I moved from uh, Eureka to Cluster, I was moving from the position of operations engineer to the position of operations manager. I was moving from an environment where I had uh, full knowledge of the technical details of the spacecraft I felt I could do everything on this mission. I felt uh, I was like a solitary sailor crossing the Atlantic and uh, maneuvering the boat all on my own. I could uh, touch all subsystems, I could touch all ground, ground systems, I could do everything on myself. At least was, this was the feeling I had. Uh, moving to Cluster, you move into a, uh, not only a new mission where you have to learn a lot, but into a position where you do not have the, the time and, in fact, the mandate to learn all the details. So you have to change the mindset. You're the team leader at that point. You're a manager. You're moving from the doer position to a manager position. And uh, you have to make sure that your team works properly and achieves the objectives without necessarily doing the job yourself. This is a difficult transition. I. I remember making mistakes in the beginning, uh, keeping tasks for myself, keeping responsibility for instruments, writing procedures, testing procedures, and realizing gradually that, that, that this is not a sustainable uh, model. Uh, you don't have the time to do it properly. And uh, in fact, your team doesn't grow properly if you have this, uh, um, uh, this attitude of doing things yourself. So. Uh, when you become the manager, you concentrate on assigning tasks. And uh, the first thing you have to uh, learn is to uh, assign objectives, telling people what you want as an output of a task very clearly, but not telling people how to achieve this task, how to achieve this output, how to perform the various things the way you would do it. Um, when you see then the results, you have to learn how to modulate uh, the interaction with your team members because not all team members will uh, perform in the same way. Not all team members will uh, uh, require exactly the same level of attention. So depending on the team members, you will have to adjust the level of intervention, the level of attention, the level of independence that you decide to give to them. And uh, this uh, modulation changes in time, changes with the growth of the individual team members, changes with the composition of the team, changes with the progress of the job. This is the uh, most important uh, change from uh, being the engineer that does the job to the technical manager that has to make sure that the job is performed right. You have to pay an incredible attention on uh, how you create your team. And you start from the selection, so a lot of effort has to be put in the selection of the team members. Um, any effort spent in the proper selection of a team member is, is worthwhile. Um, the, that's the starting point, though. Uh, eventually, the team has to grow together and uh, the best uh, results are normally obtained from a, a team which has uh, diversity in all aspects. Um, combination of nationality is actually a privilege that we have 
in our environment, because we work in a multinational environment, but also a combination of background, um, a team which is only composed by uh, engineers would not achieve uh, uh, the optimal results that you get uh, from a team which is a mixture maybe between engineers and, and scientists. Uh, I'm a physicist, I've uh, uh, been leading these mixed teams and I couldn't imagine what it would be to lead a team of only scientists, of only physicists. The combination of these components and the right mixture is what makes the team successful. And of course, um, diversity also in genders has uh, uh, a very, very important effect also on the team dynamics. It's something that I observed also in my career. I started uh, with an environment here which was uh, very close to a military environment. Uh, basically, the technical jobs were only done by, by men. And there was a certain suspicious also on the gender diversity, which has changed in the years. And we have learned to, to take advantage of this uh, other component of uh, the mixture of the teams. Uh, one aspect of uh, operations engineering is that it's uh, uh, very, very much uh, a system engineering job. Um, operations engineers have to deal with a wide variety of tasks, more than actually being specialized in a single task. It is true that uh, uh, this is also an aspect that uh, is uh, very well matching the education of a scientist, in particular a physicist. So um, I felt that uh, the mixture of specialization in uh, some individual team members, but also the generalization of uh, system engineers and physicists was also the best uh, for the team. When you work in a project that has a very long duration, like the case of Rosetta, after all it was about 20 years from the start to the completion of the mission, um, your ideal composition of the team evolves in time. Uh, when you form a team, you have to keep the time component very, very clear in your mind. Uh, if you hire a person who is perfect for a job today, you cannot expect this person to be perfect for the same job in 15 or 20 years' time. Uh, the person will evolve, the person will want to make career, uh, and uh, the person is also likely to leave. So the, um, the time evolution of the team is an absolutely essential element of the, of the team building exercise and the, and the planning of your team. Uh, this was a, a, a very important element which I believe we understood pretty soon in the case of Rosetta. So uh, we tackled it in many ways. Uh, first of all, we tackled it by a, um, creating an initial team which was, uh, had a quite uh, strong mixture of uh, uh, ages. So we had uh, uh, the, the starting kernel which was uh, 10, 15, some cases even uh, more than 15 years older than the second wave. Also accepting that we would get uh, uh, relatively low experienced people at the beginning, knowing that they would grow over a time frame of 10, 15 years. This was a fight with our management because they were used at that time uh, to shorter missions. They were used uh, to prepare and build teams which would be ready for the mission immediately after launch, while Rosetta, the actual key mission, would be 10 years after launch. Um, our management did not want to take a risk. Rosetta was the flagship, was the most important mission of the next decade. They wanted the best people, the most experienced. So it was a fight uh, to try and inject this new concept. Uh, fortunately, uh, also with the support of some of my managers, uh, we managed to to achieve that, and this was the key for the success of the Rosetta team. A second aspect that we tackled was uh, the team motivation, which um, again is very difficult to maintain over, over a time span of 20 years. Even for a mission like Rosetta, which was historical and everybody wanted to work on it, um, but you know that people grow, grow their expectations, and they want also to make career. And in this case, uh, um, we were helped by the fact that 
together with Rosetta, another couple of similar missions, Mars Express and Venus Express, appeared. And uh, we could give career opportunities to the people by moving them temporarily to other missions and then recovering them back onto Rosetta when uh, new critical phases were coming. So the, the, the two measures, which were the uh, keeping an eye on the career path, but at the same time, taking already from the beginning into account the, the recycling of the team members, uh, either because they would leave or because they would change position, uh, were the success factor in, uh, in keeping the Rosetta team well mixed and properly evolving over a period of two decades. Okay, one fundamental person in my career was uh, my manager when, when I started working on Cluster and then uh, went on on Rosetta. And uh, in further steps of my career, in fact, I worked for this person, Manfred Warhout, uh, for probably two decades and uh, following him. He was making steps in his career and I was following uh, at the level below him almost simultaneously. He was... Uh, totally ignorant of operations, like I was really very ignorant of uh, all the aspects of uh, management that he, for some reason, had already acquired, and he was uh, six, seven years older than me. So um, this uh, uh, cooperation with Manfred uh, developed over 20 years, uh, but uh, it developed with a very nice mixture of uh, um, background and expertise, and uh, while he was teaching me uh, everything about managing people and managing projects, I was on my side teaching him um, what it meant to be in the operations world. I think we both profited from each other. And uh, one thing I've always admired in Manfred, uh, although I always saw him as the old man because he was seven years older than me, um, I, I admired that he was a very, very careful listener and therefore he had an incredible capability to learn and to progress. So uh, he would listen to the people, he would uh, uh, accept the criticism, not very nicely, but he would elaborate it. And, uh, and from this, he would continuously evolve and continuously learn. Um, I remember that time uh, thinking that uh, uh, 45 years old, uh, 50 years old person could still learn was uh, quite an impressive uh, experience for me. And uh, that's one of the things I learned from him, that you never stop learning if you never stop listening. And, uh, and you accept the inputs, you elaborate them and you change. So my principle is that uh, uh, if you have a stupid question in mind, you should ask it as soon as possible, because uh, the later you ask a stupid question, the more stupid it gets. And uh, I pass this message to everybody. Keep asking questions, especially if they're stupid, and uh, ask them as soon as possible.